Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Faith Covenant Fellowship. As we continue with the service, we just want to take a few minutes to let you know about some great things happening right here at FCF. There's still time to fill up a shoebox for the Operation Christmas Child event. After service this morning, be sure to take an empty shoebox home with you, fill it out, and then bring it back to the drop-off zone across from the Connection Cafe. The deadline for this is November 19th. When that shoebox is open, they're overjoyed. You can see them shouting, jumping. Oh, look at how much they are excited. This is the first time those children are receiving the shoeboxes. They are so happy. Every box is important because every box is an opportunity to tell a child about God's love, about His Son, Jesus Christ. If you get the heart of the child, you will reach the heart of the parents, you will reach the heart of the family, and then you will touch the community. That gift box is the beginning into their hearts. Isn't it incredible how these gifts touch the lives of these children? Every year we see tens of thousands of children discipled, and we couldn't do this without you, so thank you for packing the boxes, thank you for praying for these children around the world. God bless you, and keep packing those boxes. Well, we've been collecting items for shoeboxes for several months now, and now we want to announce that there will be an official shoebox packing party on November 11th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. If you would like to help pack the shoeboxes, please sign up at the Welcome Center or online at fcfnow.org. Membership Next Steps will begin soon. Stop by the Welcome Center for more information and to get signed up. If you have made a decision for Jesus, the next step is baptism. If you're ready for that next step, we'll be having more baptisms on November 12th and would love to get you baptized as well. We encourage you to stop by the Welcome Center to get more information and to get signed up. If you're looking for a fresh start, we have another Fresh Start class coming up soon. More information and a sign-up sheet can be found at the Welcome Center. Starting on November 24th, the Salvation Army will be needing some bell ringers to volunteer on behalf of their Red Kettle campaign. Stay tuned for more information coming soon. The all-new men's ministry will be launching next week on November 8th, and we will meet right here at FCF starting at 6.30 p.m. This men's ministry will not only consist of digging in and studying God's Word, but we also plan to include time of prayer, worship, and so much more in order to equip, encourage, and challenge you to be the men of God that He has called you to be. Men, we are seriously excited for you to become part of this new men's ministry. There's no sign-up sheet or registration. All you got to do is show up. Again, the official launch date is November 8th at 6.30 p.m., and we will meet right here at FCF. The annual Christmas banquet is approaching and promises to be a fantastic evening filled with joy and fellowship. To learn more about this exciting event, please visit the Welcome Center. Well, that's everything for the announcements. Again, thank you so much for being here with us this morning. And now, let's get to the sermon. I see my life making a difference in the kingdom, not necessarily just through pastoral position, but through being a willing servant in the body of Christ. Just following the things that God has put on my heart and just being relentless and passionate for Him. Agricultural by trade, uh, I ride horses, I'm a coach, and I see myself definitely providing light in an industry that sometimes is a little bit dark. Helping others acknowledge their own need and their own sin and their own brokenness that they could, too, experience the love of Jesus in a transforming and powerful way. I think God's really blessed me with the opportunities to be able to speak into people's lives and to be able to share, share my faith and, and really be able to disciple other people. Uh, and, and another way I've been able to make a difference, I think, is I've also been able to keep some significant relationships outside of the church as well with people who don't know God, and so that's been exciting. I decided a long time ago to let God use my life for His kingdom purposes, and I think right now that looks like my ministry at the college, and um, I hope over the next couple of years at Horizon, um, my life will make a huge difference for the students that walk through these doors. It's imperative that we have people that are loving the Lord and, and godly people that are that are standing for Christ outside of the outside of the church environment and I think that that's that's how the Lord is directing my life. 
I'm so excited about the move that I have to Nairobi to work at Roslyn Academy, to be working with 50 different nationalities of students, to impact them, to find their identity in Christ, so that they're then able to go and impact so many more people around the world. I just believe that all of us are called to make an impact for God's kingdom. And what this looks like is us surrendering our agendas and stuff to God's and abiding in His Word, abiding in a relationship with Him, and through that, doing what we're called to do. Good morning. I wanted to begin with that this morning, because I think for most of us, for most Christians today, kind of being a Christian is, you know, just trying to be good or follow the Bible, not, not doing bad things, going to church. And the main goal, I would say, for most Christians is we make it to heaven. I would say that's what we think our main goal is. But the older I've gotten, the longer I've been a Christian, the thing I believe that God wants us to do and be more than anything else is to make a difference for the kingdom. And that's why I wanted to show you that this morning. I mean, I mean, if someone would say, hey, how are you making a difference for the kingdom? I mean, I mean, what would you say? Do you have an answer? Or would, would you just kind of stumble? I, I want you to think about that this morning because that's really what the sermon's about. It's about really wrestling with that question. Are we making a difference for the kingdom? Let's pray. Father, I pray for those who have ears, they would hear what the Spirit of the living God says today, that these would be a message and words we would not just hear, but they would pierce our heart and mind, and we would put them into action, and that we'd give you praise, and that we'd truly be a part of making a difference for your kingdom. Thank you for including us in the process. We pray these things, Father, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I don't know if one thing you know about me, but for my first uh, 25 years of ministry, I, I kind of started off as a youth pastor and then was a, a preaching pastor. I always worked two weeks of camp. Now think about that. So for 25 years of ministry, that's 50 weeks of church camp. 50 weeks of church camp. And every week was kind of the same. I, I always got to be one of the group leaders. I met with the kids in the morning. We met in the evening time. Sometimes we even had a short meetings in the, in the afternoon before the activity time. Uh, I always got to bring one of the Vesper messages. It was like one of the evening messages in the evening time. And they always had a campfire. And I always got to be one of the Vesper speakers. We call it having Vespers. And, we, and, we, and I'd give a campfire message. And, and I, I did that every single year. Except there was one week. <laughs> There was one week of camp that they just had everything kind of slotted already. And they said, hey, Fred, what we really need you to do is we need you to be a dorm dad. <laughs> so I was a dorm dad over a bunch of guys. And the other thing was, hey, Fred, we want you to plan all the activities for the kids. And I was doing that. But as kind of the first couple of days went on, it was kind of like they're having group time. I wasn't a part of that. And I wasn't giving Vesper messages. And, and I wasn't speaking at the campfire. And I remember just a couple days in, I don't know why, but I was almost feeling sorry for myself. And I, I remember thinking, God, am I, am I even making a difference? Am I even making a difference this year at church camp? Because I always felt like before I was in the lives of these kids. It was a high school week. And I just remember I just felt like God just whispered in my ear. He just said, Fred, just spend time with the kids. He just said, Fred, just spend time with the kids. And so that's what I did. <laughs> I played ball with them all afternoon. I spent all my free time just get, get spending time with the kids, and that's what I did. And it was like the last night at camp, there, were, there was like this great Holy Spirit move, and all these kids came forward to accept the Lord. And I ended up talking to 12 of them. And not only did I talk to 12 of them, but I ended up doing 12 baptisms that year. And the only reason I bring that up it's because for me, it was, it was that one week of camp that I really thought I wasn't making a difference. But out of all the weeks of camp I remember, I remember that one the most. You know why? Because I felt like I probably made the biggest difference in the lives of those kids during that week. And so I wanted to be thinking about that this morning. Making a difference for the kingdom. One of the questions you need to ask yourself is, is it all in the past? Am I, is it all the things I've done for the kingdom in the past? Am I doing anything today? That's one of the things you've got to wrestle with. 
A key scripture text is found in the book of Mark, Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. I believe it will be on the screen today. You can follow in your Bibles or on your iPads or your phones if you like. Mark 2, 1 through 12. Listen to what it says. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the, mat the man lying on. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? Well, he's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. And this amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. It's interesting that in this particular account with Jesus, Jesus is, is preaching in a home, and it's like the place is packed out. I mean, it's so packed that there, there's a standing room only, and it flows all the way outside the door, and, there, and there's people standing around trying to listen, they, they can't even get in. And then we find out that there's four men who are carrying a friend, probably a friend, and they're, and they're carrying him to Jesus. Can you picture it? There, there's two in the front and two in the back. We don't know how far they traveled, <laughs> whether it was a couple blocks or a couple miles or even farther. But one thing we know for sure, they're going to get their friend to Jesus no matter what. He had been paralyzed. We don't know if it was an accident, if he was born that way. We don't know how long it's been. But all we know is he couldn't walk. He's paralyzed. And they get him there, and they, and they realize they can't get him to Jesus. It's, it's an impossibility. There's no way in. The place is packed. It's at this point, some of us probably would have said, well, We tried. <laughs> we tried. We did our best. We, we got you here. We, we, we tried to get you to Jesus, but there was no way in. And I wonder if, probably reading between the lines, if, if they, they, they started taking their friend around the house and they realized there's no way in. And then one of them said this. You see that ladder? <laughs> what if we took him up the ladder, took him on the roof, <laughs> Dug a hole in the roof and we lowered him right there before Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but it would be at that point I'd have some questions. <laughs> like, are we going to get in trouble for this? <laughs> we going to get in trouble for this? I mean, this isn't our house. You know, are we going to go to jail? Are we going to need to pay a bunch of money? But this is what I know because of what happened. They decided that no matter what the cost... <laughs> No matter what the price, no matter what the penalty, they were going to get their friend to Jesus no matter what. And can you picture Jesus is in there? He, he's preaching the word it says. The place is packed. And all of a sudden, there's this stuff starts, starts coming down on the floor. And all of a sudden, they're, they're, they're luring this guy down right in front of everybody. I mean, they're interrupting Jesus' sermon. How dare they, right? How dare they, they interrupt Jesus' sermon? And Jesus looks at the man and he says, your sins are forgiven. It was a day when you read the story, you realize that a man was healed not just physically, but also spiritually. Because we know it from what Jesus says to him. And some of the teachers of the law that were there, they, they start thinking to themselves, he's blaspheming. <laughs> He can't, he can't say that. Who can forgive sins but God alone? 
And then, and then Jesus, he asked him the question, which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or to take up your mat and walk? Because you know the answer. One takes a miracle and one doesn't. One is words and one is the supernatural. But he says, so you may know. He tells the man to take up his mat and to walk. And he does. He stands up in front of them all. I'm sure there was a gasp. People started praising, probably raising their hands. Hallelujah. A miracle. And it says they all began praising God. And they all say, we've never seen anything like this before. If you notice in the text, it says that when Jesus saw their faith, when Jesus saw their faith, what faith did he see? Was it the faith of the man they were bringing? Was it the faith of the ones who were carrying him? I think it was all of them. It was all of them. Their four friends says, we're going to get this guy to Jesus no matter what. He needs, he needs healing. He needs a touch from the master's hand. The paralyzed man had faith. How do we know that? Because Jesus says your sins are forgiven because of your faith. They all believed that if they could just get to Jesus, everything would be different. Now what these four guys did, I believe, is what Christians are supposed to be doing today. We're supposed to be making a difference for the kingdom. That they got to see a miracle, that they got to see a friend saved, they got to see a friend healed. And that's what we're wrestling with this morning. So the first thing I want you to think about this morning is this. You can't change lives if you don't spend time with people. You can't change lives if you don't spend time with people. I don't know about you guys, but our American culture today is just run, run, run as hard as you can. If you're young, you run probably to children's activities. You got all these things you're doing. You got work. If you're older, you, you've got hobbies. There's, there's things on your list. All of our time schedules are filled up. And yet we live in a time where neighbors don't know neighbors, where sometimes we have a hard time spending time with our own family, let alone anyone else. But here's what I know. You can't change lives if you don't spend time with people. <laughs> and you know what that means? It means it's up to us. It means that we need to put it in our schedule book. Hey, I'm, I'm going to have our neighbors over for, for dinner this week. On, on this date at this time, hey, I'm going to get with that coworker. Hey, I'm going to get with my cousin who's been asking me some questions for a long time, but I never found the time to get with him. It means we have to intentionally plan, strategically plan, to spend time with people because here's what I know. If we don't strategically plan to do it, it doesn't happen. <laughs> it's going to be Thanksgiving. It's going to be Christmas. It's going to be Happy New Year. It's going to be, hey, it's a Super Bowl. And then it all goes, starts over again. You know I'm right. You know I'm right. You can't change lives if you don't spend time with people. Bill Willett said this, to grow spiritually, you must be connected relationally. And so that's something we all got to wrestle with. How are we connecting with people? What are we doing spiritually to make sure that happens? Or is life just passing us by? Is it just about getting to heaven? Or is it about making a difference for the kingdom? That's what I'm asking you this morning. Two of Satan's biggest strategies is fear and isolation. God wants you making a difference in people's lives. Satan does not. God wants you to do one thing. Satan wants you to do another. Guess what? Every one of us, we vote to break the tie. Our actions will speak louder than our words. At FCF, we want people to connect, grow, love, and serve in the church, in the church and outside the church. I mean, this is the vision that, that Ross is, is, is trying to, to get us as leadership to, to, to be doing, that we're putting this into practice, that we don't just hear the words, but we do it and we live it. You can't make a difference for the kingdom if you are unwilling to get out of your comfort zone. Man, we're creatures of habit. <laughs> you know, almost every week I know where most of you guys sit. <laughs> you know why? We all sit in the same place, right? Some of us in the same area. Some say, I sat somewhere else this week. I know there's always exceptions to the rule. But we're all, we're creatures of habit. 
We, 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 we like comfort. We like knowing what to expect. So we do certain things a certain way. I mean, I drive the, the same ways all the, the time. My wife's always get on. Why don't you go a different way? Because I don't know that way. <laughs> I go the way I know. It's my comfort zone. But the way we grow is by getting out of our comfort zone. That is what we need to do to grow spiritually. Will we allow obstacles to stop us from doing what we believe God wants us to do? Think about it. Will we allow obstacles to stop us from doing what we believe God wants us to do? You know, I was thinking if I was one of those four guys, I, I might have said, hey, we did our best. We tried. We really did try. We, we got you here. But the obstacle, there's no way in. <laughs> how bad do we want it? How, how much do we want to serve God and love God and follow God? Will we go the extra mile? Will, will, we, will we take new steps of faith even when we don't know the outcome? When you take a step of faith to make a difference for the kingdom, you will see amazing things. <laughs> That's what the story was about. <laughs> when you take steps of faith outside of your comfort zone, you're going to see amazing things. But if you just do what you've always done, you're going to see the same things you always see. Doesn't that make sense? And if you want to see amazing things, that means you're going to have to do things differently. And that probably means getting out of your comfort zone. <clears throat> I wanted us to think about what are we doing? What are we doing to make a difference for the kingdom? What, what are you, what are you going to say? What, what's your answer? How are you going to respond? You know, as a pastor, out of all the things that I do, preaching, teaching, the list can go on and on. If you were to ask me right now, Fred, what's, 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 the, what's probably the most important thing you, you think you're doing to, to make a difference for the kingdom? I, I could answer that. You know what my answer would be? I'm discipling two guys. Every single week or every other week we get together, I'm discipling two guys, and, and it goes on year after year after year. And in January, I've committed to a third one. My, my, my schedule's busy, too. Why would you do that? Because it's about making a difference for the kingdom. The two most important things is what? Making disciples and discipleship, right? It's making disciples and growing disciples. That, that's what Jesus tried to teach us. It's about making a difference for the kingdom. So you're in one of two groups this morning. Either in group one, you're doing the basics. And what are the basics? The basics is, hey, you're going to church regularly. You're here most of the time. You're reading your Bible daily, you're praying daily, and you're, and you're probably tithing weekly. That, that's kind of the basics. If you're, if you're a Christian, that's kind of what the Bible says. Those are just things you do if you're a Christian. You go to church, you read your Bible, you pray, you tithe. But how do we make a difference for the kingdom? Because doing those things is, is really maybe just the normal stuff we do as Christians. In the church, there's connect groups. We'll be starting them up, I think, at the end of February again. They're, 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 we offer them during the year because we believe it's important to connect people together so they can disciple each other. There's ministries you can serve in. Whatever your gift it is, whatever your passion is, whatever your heart is, you decide. What can you do to make a difference for the kingdom? How has God gifted you? There's men's ministry. It's starting back up. This Wednesday at 6.30, I, I plan on being there. There's, there's women's ministry. There was, just, there was just a women's conference here Saturday. How many women were at the women's conference? I heard there was like 100. Two, two ladies got saved there. Isn't that what it's about? Two ladies got saved. So I'm telling you that for the 100, the, for the 100 that were there, they got to see some amazing things, Right? But I'm just being honest. If you weren't there, you didn't get to see it. And, and that's what I'm talking about. What, what are we doing? How are we setting ourselves up to be involved in making a difference in the kingdom? Where are we spending our time? There's tons of things outside the church we can do. There's food finders where we're trying to feed the poor. There's pack away hunger. I was a part of that yesterday. A lot of churches, a lot of Christians get together. 
I think 30,000 of the, of, the, of the ones we packed is going to Ukraine. I think 20,000 more are going to feed the hungry in this area. <laughs> I'm just saying that when you're part of those things, it's like you know you're making a difference. You're doing something for the kingdom. There's ringing the bells for the Salvation Army. Because what does the Salvation Army do? They help people. <laughs> And by helping them, we're helping others. There's Compassion International. We, we have a child we, we have from another country. And for not a lot of money, I think it's like $35. $35, you feed, clothe, educate. And, and there's, they're bringing kids up in a, in a Christian environment. There's missions projects. There's community outreach. You, you, you fill in the blank. What can you do for the kingdom? But I know this, whatever it is, you'll be doing it with other people. But if you were to ask me, out of all the things that we do, out of them all, what's the most important? You know the answer. It's making disciples. It's, it's always been that. It's making disciples. It's what Jesus said, right? Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. But that means we've got to spend time with people. That means we just got to share what we know. Here's what I know. Here's what I know. That's what it is to make disciples. But the other is discipleship. And you might say, man, Fred, you sure have been talking about this discipleship stuff for a long time. Now, why are you doing that? You know, I'm doing that because, you know, Ross kind of discipled me. He, he discipled me on, like, why this is so important and why we need to be refocusing on it. And we're trying to get our leadership is on board on this. And this is the direction we're going. We believe with all our heart making disciples and discipleship is what the church is supposed to be doing. And we're saying, you can be a part of it. This is what we want you to be a part of. We want to get back to the basics. We want to get back to what the early church was doing. We want the church to be growing and doing and thriving. And we always want to give the glory to God because he's the one who enables us to do it. Making a difference for the kingdom. I'm not sure if the praise band's coming up or Doc's coming up. I'm sorry I didn't talk this morning, but who's ever coming up? (laughs) We are going to have an invitation time. And here's what I know. If you're here this morning and you're not doing the basics, you're not in church regularly, you're not reading your Bible, praying daily, you're not tithing weekly, this whole, my whole sermon really wasn't for you because you're not even doing those things. If you're not doing those things, why would you do these other things? I'm just being honest with you. For some of you, that's my commitment this morning. I, I, need, to, I need to step up. I need to do the basics. I need, I need to be faithful to the church. I need to be reading my Bible and prayer. I need to be tithing. Because all tithing is, is trusting God with your money. And and if we're not doing those things, why would we do these other things? So for some of you this morning, God's saying, what's on that list you need to step up in? What's God talking to you about? For others, it's the big question this morning. Hey, I'm doing the basics. I'm going to church. I'm reading my Bible. I'm praying. I'm tithing. But what am I doing to make a difference? (laughs) For the kingdom. Is life just about living and raising kids and going to work and paying bills and sometime I die and I'm hoping to go to heaven because I accept the Lord sometime in my life? Or did you do something for the kingdom? Use your gifts or your talents. You invested into people. Someone's investing in you. You have a Paul. There's a Timothy. Someone you're investing in. You're making a difference for the kingdom. At the end of the day, you say, praise be to God, I give you the glory. Because everything I have comes from you. My life, every breath, every second. And we don't know how much time we have. It's later than it's ever been. And that question is before us. What are we doing? If you have a couple of things you can say, hey, I'm making a difference. I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. Praise God. But all I'm asking is, is, is if, you, if you can't fill that in, if you don't have an answer, then come to the altar and say, God, <laughs> give me an answer. What can I do to make a difference for you? 
Maybe there's just some this morning you need prayer. Things in your family, things at work, a lost job, bad news by a doctor, problems with your kids, a broken relationship. And you just want to say, God, I need you now. If you want to come and just pray by yourself, you can, you can come here. If you want someone to pray with you, you can come over here. But the main thing is, is you come. You take a step of faith and you give it to God. Let's stand this morning. And if God is asking you to come, you come only because of him. Let's see.
Let's pray together, please. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for giving the courage to come to the altar because it takes a lot. Lord, it takes a lot to give ourselves to you when we think we're strong or too powerful or that we can handle it on our own. Lord, thank you for being our Father. Thank you for being our promise keeper, our way maker, our miracle worker. Thank you for all of our family here because I consider every person in this church my family. Thank you so much for our worship team and our pastors and the leaders of the church trying to help us make disciples. Lord, we need them. We need a fire under our church. We need to go out and we need to be a revival, not just have revival. Lord, thank you so much for your son and for him dying for all of our sins. We thank you so much for him. And it's in Jesus' name that all his people said, amen.